It's called Psychopath Free. That one helped me a lot. And okay. uh, Codependency No More. Because it, it made me deal with my codependency issues, too. And right. I already saw his anger. I already saw what he could do. So yes. Yes. I went straight, like, mom bear mode. And I was like, okay, if I get fired, I get fired. I don't even care anymore. Like, I have to go get my son. So I told right. my boss, as he was like, um, he, he told me, the last thing he told me was, I'm not taking care of him. I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm sick. I'm not taking care of him. It's like, well, Jesus, man. Like, thanks. Wow. There so were times I'm, where Mama Bear came out, and I'm I'm telling you, I'm so surprised. Honestly, the fear of going to jail <laughs> saved me a lot <laughs> because he he started inserting my son into it, and there was a, like one time where he like it was like ten at ten o'clock at night, and we were just going at it because I didn't have dinner ready for him, and he called me you no know, a, a really bad wife and a bad mom. And like, what am I doing with him? I'm just using him for money, which is a freaking lie. Um, So I was like, we got, we got a comment here says they always on a stage. It always, in other words, it's always got to look good. It's always on social media. Oh man. All of my friends and his like girlfriends and you know, all the the chick people that we had around us, they were just like, Oh, he treats you so good. Or, Oh my God, I wish my husband did that. And just like, girl, no run. Like, no, you don't. And then he started asking more like it opened up a whole childhood door. And like, that's why I was really scared to be lonely. And that's why I wanted people to like me. And that's why I was basically, I don't want to say I was fake for 27 years, but I was nice. And I was doing all these favors for people, not because of me, because I wanted them to like me and I wanted friends because when I was growing up, I was really lonely as a child and, you know, religious parents, very strict, like upcoming, you know, so growing up, I wanted friends. And how do you get yeah. friends? For a fact, yeah. I know that. Yeah, for a yeah. Fact. The, the whole pattern is you need me to regulate you because they don't finish the sentence. The sentence, the full sentence is you need me. You need me to regulate you because I can't regulate myself. Exactly. So if I can see what it's like to control someone, I feel under control myself. But actually, it's a lie. They're, 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 they're dark inside. They're, there's. They don't put out There's any, nothing there. no, no real light. It's all fa- a facade. Um, I left September 4th. So it was just a whole bunch of, in my own head. And I was already going to therapy be- like while I was married to him. And he hated it. Hated it. He, you're wasting money. She's using you. You just want another person to tell you to leave me. Yada, 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 yada. So... When I left him and I finally went back to therapy, she was like, hey, you know, are you safe now? Are like, are we going to start, you know, the whole process? Like, yeah. But I felt like she really wasn't helping because he would tell me, I would tell her, you know, certain things that he would do to me and my son. And she's like, well, I think he loves you. He just doesn't know how to love. And it's like, I don't want to hear that right now because I, I just left and he's still texting me and calling me and Oh, forgive me. I'm sorry. I'll do better. So you have, you know, narcissist ex-husband over here trying to do that. And then the therapist that I was going to at the time telling me like, oh, he, I'm sure he loves you, but he just doesn't know how to love. And and I would be thinking like, that's not my problem. Right, right. So uh, I saw that book on Audible and I was like, I need other help. Mm-hmm. So I had therapy, but I just didn't like the way she would word some things or like, it would make me feel like it was my fault that that happened. So that's why I chose my therapist right now. I I adore him. He's so awesome. He helps me so much. But um, yeah, at that time I I read that book, like on Audible, I would listen to it on my way to Baytown picking up my kid and I would like listen to it on my way to work. And it's just funny because every, it had like little checklists of like, okay, this is like, these are the red flags that you probably already went through. And it, I, I checked every single one of them. And I was like, dang, that's crazy. Like, wow. it's so narcissistic textbook. Like, literally, like the textbook of this. Oh, words, he being, did that too. Being your own centrifugal force. Being, being your own uh, source of energy. Mm-hmm. We all have it. We just get conditioned to believe, depending on who our caregivers are. Because we don't know any better, we just yeah. live, we just feed off of what our caregivers say, and 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 they're not at fault; they're just repeating a pattern. 
Exactly. And so now you're developing a whole new pattern. I'm going to get, I'm get uh, something on the screen. I'll throw this out because you're getting comments and I don't want to ignore those. Uh, William says, uh, true. And cheers to cheers to all you red pilled warriors out there. So he's giving you props as being a red pilled warrior uh, because you're, you're going through that. Uh, most of the time you're, you're finding out uh, each day that you're taking care of yourself. Mm-hmm. That you could have been doing this a long time ago. Ex- and yeah. Be- before you ever had a son. I was telling you- my therapist, like, if I was the type of person that I am becoming now, I would have never married him. I would have never even given him a chance because yeah. the type of person yeah. that I am now, my boundaries are so firm right now that I'm yeah. like, oh, okay, you're you're mad that I don't want to go on a date with you. Okay, bye. <laughs> like, I don't yeah, have right. to. You know, no, right. you, you don't have to fix anything exactly because, because you're you're not a repairman. You're not a repair woman. I'm about to lose my mind right now on him. So I was like, OK, I, I just need to get home and get my kid. And I texted my son's dad. And I was like, hey, are you home? Like, is there any way we can meet up and you can pick up Nolan? He was at work. So he's like, I can't. I'm sorry. I'm like, OK, you know, it's OK. So. While I'm driving home, I'm calling and texting my girlfriends and my sister like, hey, am I overreacting? Was this unfair for me to ask him to go get Nolan? And they're all telling me like, you know, what are you thinking? Like, that's not that's not any that's not bad for you to ask. Like, that's your husband. He's supposed to have your back. He's supposed to, you know, be there for you. Right. Mm -hmm. So after I had a talk like with them and kind of built myself up like, okay, I'm and it was crazy because I'm telling you, it's all mental because I felt like I did something wrong and I felt like I should have never asked them. So once I got like that confirmation of you're right, you know, I have friends in my family. They will always come out like they will call me every day. Like, no, I was worse in that marriage. I'm I'm lonely. Yes. And I'm sad, but. I'm a lot better. (laughs) 